One, sorry it's been such a long time since uh, I've done a tutorial, but I was uh, kind of out ill for a little while and I wasn't really in the mood to, to do anything. So uh, hopefully now I can, now that I'm back to 100%, I can go ahead and kind of uh, do more tutorials and do them on a more consistent basis. So this is a campus map, map of a campus I'm building entirely in 3D, and uh, it's going to end up showing up in the Unity uh, programming environment and because then you're going to be able to fly through the campus, find all the buildings you want, see exactly what they look like before going on the campus. So it's a great tool for people who want to come to this university. So I'm going to show you how to make sure that the textures show up correctly in a real-time environment like Unity. Okay, so we got to do something called UV mapping, which is really a hassle. So I'm going to select this building here, this astronomy building. It's the simplest building on campus. I'm going to move it to its own layer so that we can go ahead and... Uh, work with it by itself by hitting M and I'll click on like for example this third little chip here then down here I'll click on that chip number three there so it's by itself and I'm going to split this view so we can see the 3D view and the UV view at the same time by just hovering up here until the cursor turns to a plus and then just drag out go to UV image editor okay let's select this brick image here so, um, what we need to do here is, let's say we want to take this brick image and map it onto our little astronomy building so that our astronomy building looks like it's made out of bricks. Okay, so in order to get that to show up, there's a few things we have to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit N to bring up my options. And I'm going to go to uh, Display, and under Shading, make sure that GLSL is selected. And then under my view mode, I'm going to go to textured. You'll see it changed. All right. Next thing is I have to associate this um, image with the texture that's with this building. So you can see here this building's already been given a, a material here. I called it astronomy building. I'll just select on the little um, texture icon, and then there should be some uh, option, you know, some slats here for adding a texture. I'm just I'm going to click new. And under the texture type, I'm going to say image. All right, oops. And then we'll drag down here. Under mapping, the defaults to generated. I need to select UV. So we're going to use UVs as the texture type. And then finally, under the image, I'll select whatever image. I can either open an image or I've already got this image in here selected. So now you can see that the image has been applied to this object but it doesn't really look like a building that's made out of brick because there's only about two bricks per you know building of per wall so uh, we're gonna have to you know tell the computer exactly how this 2d image is going to sit on this 3d object so I'm gonna select the object and hit tab to go into the edit mode all right and if I select everything you can see I've already created some UVs here uh, I'll show you the way you create UVs is you select the uh, parts of the object you want, you hit U to bring up the UV mapping window, and uh, you got some options here. Uh, of course, unwrap is just going to start unwrapping it, and so when you unwrap it, you'll see by default it gives you something that looks kind of weird and probably not what you want. Um, in order to use the unwrap effectively, you have to tell uh, Blender how you want this 3D object to be uh, exploded out into and flattened out into a 2D view. The easiest way to do this is to hit U and go to the bottom option which is Smart Project. All right, and that will take every face and lay it out and put it side by side so that the faces don't overlap. Each, each face has its own uh, its own place on the image. You can see here if I select the image while I have the UV selected, I can see the uh, UV superimposed on it. So now I can go ahead and see, okay, so for example, when you select each face, you can see where they sit on this 2D image. Now if I select these UVs and start moving them, you can see on the side here how the texture updates with it. So if I start scaling this up and down, you can see, okay, so now I'm getting more bricks you know, on this image it's looking more like an actual, uh, like an actual uh, brick wall. Uh, the bricks are going up and down. Most bricks go side to side, so I'll just go ahead and hit R to rotate. So your R, G, and S, they 
work exactly the way they would work on you know your your other um, on your 3D view there. So I'll go ahead and um, just like over here, if you control control tab and you can, you can select vertex edge or face over here in this thing, you can hit control tab. You have vertex edge face and island. So if we were to go to island mode, for example, selecting one piece of the island selects the whole thing. All right. All right I'm going to go to uh, island mode over here. I'm going to go to face mode over here. And I can just start selecting these, moving these faces around and scaling them and rotating them until they match up the way I want. All right, so now we have something that is starting to look a bit more like a, a brick building. So if this was in a game, for example, it would start looking, you know, like an actual brick, brick building. Now you're going to notice here that, as you can see, this wall and this wall, the bricks don't exactly match up. So what you have to do is, unfortunately, you have to do a lot of just trial and error. And, um, you know, what a lot of people do is they go ahead and they smart project or they project their UVs and they get everything looking uh, nice and tidy in this window here. And then they either do a screen grab of this and bring it into Photoshop and paint the textures onto it right there. Or um, you can paint textures inside of uh, Blender as well. You can go in here, you can use your image painting tools, you can paint on top of these textures and whatnot. So there's a lot of different options. But basically, um, again, UV mapping, you have to um, select the uh, object, you have to select the type of mapping you want, and then you have to go usually into the UV editing window and then further edit the UVs. Uh, themselves in order to have things uh, show up correctly. All right. Now, <clears throat> again, the UVs, you can, as you can see here, I have I'm moving and scaling this UV around. As you can see, it's it's over top of the other ones, and you can do that. I mean, whatever, basically, whatever looks right for your uh, in individual project. It doesn't matter where these UVs are. Um, they could all be packed up in one corner if you wanted them to be as long as the image lays correctly on them and you can see in, in your viewport what it looks like uh, there's no right or wrong answer as long as you know they're doing that but you will have to be aware that if you do have these UVs overlap each other oops then they will in fact share the same uh, the same portion of the image what you'll see in a lot of video game uh, uh, in a lot of video game textures, if you open up like a, uh, let me smart project this again to get it back to normal. What you'll see in a lot of video game textures is that uh, they have the UVs kind of laid out like flat like this, side by side, and then they'll just kind of paint over this stuff so that um, the UVs can, uh, so that each wall can have a slightly different kind of unique look to it and whatnot. It's all up to you, and, and depending on the restrictions of your project, those are the basics of it. So, um, the other uh, mapping types here for UV. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you this one here. If I hit U, there's these other um, mapping options. Let me hit everything here and go U and Q projection. Well, you'll see usually these mapping options here, projecting from a certain uh, type of projection, they come out and give you this weird gobbledygook. Sphere projection gives you a mess kind of like that. They're usually not that good. The one that is pretty good, for example, like let's select these three faces here. And we'll kind of zoom in and get the camera in this kind of isometric look, looking perspective. And I'll hit U and I'll go to project from view. So now you'll see that the UVs will be projected uh, from wherever the view is. So for example, if you want this to match up with like an image of a, a house done from an isometric perspective, you can in fact do that. If I go to the front view and hit U, project from view, you'll see that it actually projects it from there. So those are the very bare bones basics of using uh, the UV editing features. And um, there's a lot more to it than that. Unfortunately, there's a lot of trial and error. It's not a very uh, fun thing to do, I guess. I, I can't think of too many people who really say, I can't wait to wake up in the morning and UV map. Uh, it's more of a necessary evil. But I, I hope that you um, get something out of this.